Oh, can we do a clap sync? Do you remember I was saying the other day we always forget to do that? Can you count us into a little... But never, we're not... The reason why you do a clap sync is to sync up video and audio. Right, but no, my point is, though, that um, <laughs> often the recording is still slightly off, right? Okay. You know, if people are sort of hovering over the button. Mm. So if we do a little thing and in 3, 2, 1, then that will be a, a better... Do you want me to right, do it? Yeah. Yeah, I just right. want to do it just to do it. On, on yeah. go, right? <laughs> Three, <laughs> Dad's two... Sorry, Dazra looks so excited. He's sitting exactly. there and <laughs> up and prepped. Ready? <laughs> yeah, okay. Go on, Three, go two, one, go. Oh, that was go good. On. Okay. I like that. That was Beautiful. really fun. See, we'll do that again. That's, yeah. that's the new right? thing. Yeah. Is that the that new so thing? Fun. Yeah, that's the new <laughs> thing that people are going to tune in for. Oh, I wonder what it sounds like when Jorby claps. <laughs> what? Well, no, well, no, but you're not keeping the clap sync in. Oh, that's what you think. And they're listening. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, that guy, he's got a nice clap. I've heard it before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. We're going to have like a clap rating system. So far, <laughs> Dazrin is top and bottom of our clap rating system table. It's a harsh system. It's also mid table. Yeah. The bar is like low and high at the same time, yeah. guys. This is one bar. That's all it is. <laughs> Hello there, friends. How are you all doing? Welcome to the Subpar Poddy C. Officially. Unofficially. The best podcast on the internet. My name is Stumpy. My name is Carl. And we are joined by the most charismatic, the most selfless, the beautiful man himself. It is Dazarin. How are you doing, Dazarin? I don't think I've ever heard a better intro to a podcast. I'm telling you, that was that was awesome. I see you smiling as we went so we do that um like week on week on the show and stuff like that. My name is unofficially all that jazz. But when we were doing it, I could just see you going like <laughs> it's so lovely. Because I hear it all the time. Now. And now that I'm in like voice with you guys, like I can see it. So it's just like <laughs> officially, <laughs> unofficially. And I'm just like, yes. It's so flawless. Um, I, to be fair, every now and then, whenever I see, like, or I hear, like, if I'm walking around, I hear somebody say, like, officially in any other context, straight away, I think unofficially. Like, without uh, fail, every time. There's a few like pieces of advertising stuff I've seen where they 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 definitely steal the unofficially officially thing from us. The LEC. There was something recently. Was it LEC? Is that one of the, the recent ones? The yeah, LEC the or the official LCF unofficial? One, yeah. Bastards. A lot of them. Absolute bastards. Um, I'll tell yeah. you who else is bastards. Our Patreons. Right. We have okay. got a lot of people. Right. They love it. Don't people worry, like they being negged. Yeah, they do. They love being told to fuck themselves when they give us money. <laughs> so um, we, we, we've been doing the podcast for a little bit and we get sort of like, you know, just a couple every like few weeks, get a couple in. The one episode where I said fuck Patreons about 10 times, we got maybe 15 new people. So people, yeah, they are masochistic. Sadistic? What's the one where you like being told off? Cuck simps. They're There's simps. Lots of words. I don't know what I see. I see simp on no, Reddit loads. That's the new loads. term. Yeah, I think that's the new sort of fashionable thing from Is cuck it? now. Okay, yeah. so all the cucks and the simps and the other fellas who are chilling out on our Patreon, thank you very much. <laughs> Fuck you all. Um, if you want to help contribute towards that, patreon.com slash subpar, but in HD, you get to listen to the podcast early. What a world. All right. Well, oh, also listen on Spotify and iTunes and stuff because it's in other places if you don't like YouTube for podcasts because YouTube for podcasts is terrible. You can only listen properly if you have like YouTube premium. Do you have that, Daz? Do you have YouTube <laughs> red or YouTube premium, whatever it's called now? I don't, but Jorby does, and it's actually no, really he cool. What? No, no, that's no. Right, look, listen. Let me. Okay, it's okay. cool because the features it provides are good. Right, that's that's fair. I'm not saying it's not a good product. Right. My point is that it shouldn't be paid for. You shouldn't have to pay five dollars a month or whatever to be able to listen to it without having your screen on. on yeah, your that's phone. annoying. So it gets basic as that. I guess. I think it also like takes away ads and stuff too. I'm not sure, but I just know that when we were writing, um, I went to go visit one weekend for a promotion relegation, mm-hmm. and uh, me and Jorby, he wasn't working, so he just, we drove us up to the studio, and he plays the like I'm hearing audio from the game, and I'm like, do you have like Twitch open or something? He's like, oh no, this is YouTube. I'm like, YouTube. I'm like, what are you talking? He's about? there he's hoping like, that you ask. He's there ready to flex <laughs> on you with his YouTube. Yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like, he he dead sold me on it too. He was like, <laughs> dude, it has so many cool features. Like, I I mean, he can explain it better than anyone, but I I definitely was like, oh. <laughs> That's an interesting thing that I didn't know about. Uh, I know I don't know if I'll use it, but I, you know, at least we know we should get it's him a viable on to option. talk all about YouTube Premium and sell us on it because, like, fuck, am I ever going to buy it? But I feel like Jordan could sell me on anything potentially. So every week we're going to get someone on that's going to sell you on something that we've traditionally hated. <laughs> so now it's you know the CRL. Then next week it's going to be oh, YouTube. Plus. What's it going to be after that? 
I don't know. I don't like, really hate many things. Um, rap music. I don't hate many things. No, no, rap no, no, music. no. Rap music's fine. It's fine. Okay. It's no acoustic, chill voice people, though, is it? That's my, <laughs> you know, and that's my genre. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's move on to talking all about Dazarin, right? Because he's a little bit of the talk of the town at the moment. You're the cock yes. of the walk, right? You've oh. been you've been you've been working <laughs> in and around the bubble scene for a long a while now. Um, and what's been sort of uh, bringing you up again in the public zeitgeist is the skirmish, um, and all the tournaments that are surrounding that. Do you want to let people know what the skirmish is? Yeah. So um, I actually I see the the writings on it. Uh, for you guys back in um, March 2019. I actually found a clip from 2018 March oh, wow. where um, we had some teams that are still playing and play-ins. Uh, I got to I gotta look at this roster just to be 100% sure. But we had like Space Station back when they had oh, wow. Over Zero and Lemon Puppy <laughs> on their team. Like a long, like, like obviously two years ago. And uh, we started doing that uh, just because I think a lot of teams wanted to get Oh, no, I remember um, I was talking to Cloud Fuel back when he was still doing stuff. Oh, we love Cloud Fuel. And, good old days. Oh, and uh, he was, you know, he was just struggling to find results for, for teams. It was just like, you know, there's not a lot of stuff going this on. For seeding. Like, yeah, for seeding. Mm. For seeding. So there was just not a lot of stuff going on. And then teams, obviously players, they wanted to get their seedings up um any way that they could and they just didn't uh, there was just no events for for them to run this was around the time where we saw uh, like community orgs in the north america like nexus mm. rival esports everyone started to like take a tone backwards a bit mm. so what i did was i decided well um i have free time i love doing rocket league stuff i mm. love the bubble scene you know like i feel like it was important for me to want to know who these teams are i loved uh giving teams that were going into the rival series of spotlight any way i could mm. so uh for me it was like okay this is kind of a win-win for everybody so i proposed the idea of doing head-to-head -head show matches at first which exactly it's exactly what it was we would do um it would be best of seven best of fives or no 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 best of three best of sevens i think it was it was something like that where okay so three sets of a best of seven and see yeah. who gets first two out of three it okay yeah, exactly. Because that was, you know, one, it was a way for me to, like, try out new stuff. Like, how will we have, like, an actual real, um, how, how can we decide which team is actually the better team so mm. we know how to properly seat them? Well, let's give them, like, 14 matches in a row mm. and see, like, how well they do. But, um, yeah, I mean, that was just something that I had started. And after it got, a, like, traction in, in a bubble scene, it was just really, it was just something that I kept doing uh, throughout previous off seasons as much as I could. And then recently, like recently being the past month or so, is that when it's really started to blow up? Or has it been more of a slower roll than that? Um, I think that it was a slower roll for sure. Uh, it definitely, there is a burst here. And burst, the burst comes from Europe. Once yes. I said, once I said, hey, you know, I, and I was really hesitant to get involved with Europe at first, mainly because uh, I just didn't know if, there would really be the support there. Mm. You know, I, I'm going into a region where I don't know anybody. Like, yeah. I, obviously, I know people. Like, I know you guys and mm -hmm. this, that, and the other thing. But I didn't know the players on the same level as I knew the NA players. So mm. I was going in dark. Um, but I put out a tweet. I was like, hey, guys, you know, you know, I do this for NA. If you guys want me to do it for Europe, you know, I can at least try. Like, this was a prime time in my life mm. where I actually had the – availability to do you know both north america and europe mm -hmm. um and once i got the response it, it was just like everyone was like yes yes i got speed retweeting it like guys do this i have everyone so yeah, i'm like okay we'll do one to <laughs> test it out you know we'll see what happens then next thing i know we're going through the bracket, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, yeah, donations go towards the prize pool. The whole community comes in, like, it's like small donations that go up to, like, almost $1,000. Keep in mind, I've been doing this for, like, again, two years at this point, and we have never even passed 500 in North America, <laughs> let alone 1,000. So I'm like, oh, okay, EU's coming out So to Europe you, right? did good. Europe did well to, like, get you involved. Yeah, yeah, they did. And then, like, and Civic came through, donated another thousand, and I cried on stream. <laughs> no, <that's laughs> because I, it was that's lovely. fair enough, yeah. I mean, yeah, is. the fact that there was so much of an outpouring, like, just to get a tournament in Europe, like, basically people saying, please, 
just give us something. Because obviously, this isn't for, correct if I'm wrong, this isn't for your RLCS and RLRS level players, is it? This is all no. for people outside of it. So you've got Speed retweeting it and saying, everybody, please take part. He, he's not going to benefit from even being a player in that. He's not going to get that prize pool. But he's no. trying to push the scene along. And I think it's that sort of like that community push, even the donations as well, where everyone's trying to help each other out. And it's when, when the tide comes in, all boats rise. And so everybody's yeah. going to be working with each other and just get us to the top. Um, did you have any pushback at all? You said you had a load of support. Was there anybody saying, no, stick to North America, just keep it here? Or was it really nice and free flowing? Um, no, I won't say like there's no pushback in terms of getting involved in Europe. There's always pushback from players behind the scenes that no one really see, talk, mm. like, talks about. Um, and it's not, I won't say it's pushback, but it's more so, hey, um, this tournament, you know, it's going on really late. Like, is there a way that we can change this to this? What time or, does it finish in the EU normally? Uh, I think it finishes around like 11 or close to midnight around their time. So okay. it's, not, it's not like a 3 a.m. thing in it or anything. Not like, like that. No. I guess where the you time have... zones struggle. Well, what was that tournament no. where like the final qualifier in EU was at like 3 in the morning it started? Do you remember then like some teams had to like drop out? It was like Bluey yeah, or something, wasn't like it? Parents, like parents, because they're parents. Yeah, and they had to like drop out in the end. But yeah, I mean, 11 a.m. like midnight odd. That's yeah. that's late, but it's not, I guess, like the worst. But I guess yeah. we're also talking from the perspective of adults <laughs> who can just true. be, who also, can just be like, true. yeah, I can just sort of stay up because I'm not, I don't need, I don't have a bedtime. Yeah, and then like I was getting flooded with uh, DMs from both NA and EU, and I was really just not prepared for that. So everyone, like, I definitely got a lot of. Oh my god, you're not responding to me. Oh my god, ego. Da, da, da. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm oh like, my god. it's so it's hard because sometimes I just can't respond because they'll mm. be like, hey, is there a spot available? And I don't know a hundred percent if there's a spot available until we actually fill out the brackets. Mm. So I can't say no. I don't want to say no, and then like a team has to drop out or something, and then I'm like, okay, uh, are you guys busy? Like, can you guys come in? So it's like it's a weird spot. I love the word ego being thrown around when you have been working <laughs> fairly tirelessly to support the bubble scene at least in na for i mean you said back from march 2018 you sort of make the jump to eu because a lot of very passionate very loud europeans that are moaning we are moaning and hello that's us. and you say exactly that is us and you said you know what all right i'll provide something for you it blows up because we're all so appreciative and then a few people because you're suddenly very busy and you've finally sort of got a break after a lot of hard work in the background, then people are like, oh, why aren't you responding to me? Grr, grr, grr. <laughs> it's, people can be pathetic, Dazarin. Don't let them put you off. I'm sure you won't. But it's like, no. you know, whenever anyone takes that next step, there'll always be someone waiting to call them out for something, just sort mm. of hovering over that button to, to call them out however they can, which is a, a shame. <clears throat> but ultimately, this is a beautiful thing that you're doing for the bubble scene at the moment. And I think I can speak on behalf of Europe especially to say that it's really appreciated because I myself you know I'm looking forward to the RLCS and I'm thinking mm. I've seen these guys guys play in two three months I haven't done anything so I don't know who's well, going to be better who's going to be worse I guess you've got well you've got like we're a little bit different at the moment because of how soon RLCS That's like true. finals was compared but like yeah. normally it's sort of like what three or four months you've got like an off season and mm. there's just like nothing happening it's also the case of obviously this is uh, going more towards the pro end of like tournaments and stuff but it's a case of you've got the RLCS this year and we spoke about it before you've also got the Olympics but as of right now we don't know what else we have so it's nice that there's other competitions going on and it's a community push um yeah yeah so it, it's good to know that obviously there's a lot of people who are wanting this to happen um if we go uh, back a little bit Dazarin into your um into your history because we're talking about sort of the current but obviously you as far as I can remember for as long as I've been knowing about Rocket League and I've been involved with Rocket League, you've also always been there as well. Um, were you there like since the start, for people who don't know? Uh, I started casting since 2016. It was, uh, I believe, right after Season 2. And then, like, I, I obviously watched Season 1, but I've been playing Rocket League since uh, SARP. And I always wanted to be involved in it. And then I just, I don't know, I followed a bunch of subreddits. Like, I still have, like, those same subreddits that are dead now um, <laughs> on my list. But, like, I don't know. Uh, I saw a post one day asking for, for commentators to be involved around that time. And, you know, I'd always kind of done it with my friends as a joke. And mm. I said, you know what, let me, let me actually try to give this a shot. <laughs> and then I ended up getting into it that way. Was that so with Stumpy and me? Um, 
Rocket League sort of found us in the sense that, at least for me, I wasn't trying to get into esports by any mm. means. I didn't even know what Twitch was until Rocket League came out. And then, you know, people will know my story, but Rocket League came out and suddenly it blew up and suddenly I'm in this weird world of esports. Were you there back in, let's say back in early 2015, before it came out in July, sort of watching League of Legends, thinking, do I cast this? Or watching some CSGO, trying to find your angle. And then Rocket League came out and that was the game? Or was it Rocket League came out and then you were like, Wow, I didn't realize this competitive video gaming was as incredible as it is. Uh, it's more it's more along the lines of um your your kind of side of the story. Like uh, around that time, like I had always I kind of kept an eye on it. Mm -hmm. Um, again, just coming from Sarp, that was just like a game that you know me and my friends always played a lot. So mm -hmm. we were, I was like, yo, they're making this for PlayStation Four. Like this could be <laughs> so cool. Oh my god, like we have to play it. Oh my god, it's free. Oh, it's so, cool. <laughs> so PS Plus. <laughs> so like that that whole thing was fine, but no my life like i have a completely different like side of my life where like i, I was doing music and mm. my dad's a big time um he's a he well i don't know if he still is but back in the day he was a big time uh record executive um, oh wow yeah it's actually like super dramatic uh because he's the one who signed r kelly to his label and you know that whole kind of spiel okay oh, wow oh boy Jesus. okay yeah. okay okay all right. Um, yeah. Again, like, there's always like, and I, keep in mind, like, I'm very hands off on this. I have to say this, like, I'm super hands off on this. Yeah. yeah. Because like, my dad and my mom are separated. I stay with my mom, uh, and uh, it was crazy. While like, because you know, this is the first time R. Kelly's been like involved in any like drama or anything like that. The first time when he was going to court cases, that used to be the most I used to ever see my dad because I would see him walk into the courtroom with him on the news. You know how like the cameras have like the guy walking in yeah, and yeah. like all those people. Walk, yeah, I would see my dad. That adds like those like red people walking next to him, and they're all like, "Oh snap!" And then my mom be like, "There's your dad." And I, and I, and I'd be like, "Oh yeah, that is my dad." And I like, "How old are oh. you at this point?" I'm like eight. Oh <laughs> I think my I'm god! Like eight. Yeah. Wow. I, I had no idea. Wait, so it's... where's that in your notes, Stumpy? Why didn't we yeah, sort of sorry, dig I this out before starting the really? podcast? <laughs> Shit. That wasn't on your yeah. Wikipedia page. <laughs> that was, I'm glad that's not on my Wikipedia page. Like, like we we could keep that through. So are you um so are you so does your dad still work in the music industry? You said that obviously you were you were, yeah. you, were you trying to get part of that? Were you sort of gonna go at it with him or? Um Cause, well, yeah, my dad still works in the music industry. He's a big, he's like, they call him like a legendary old school house music DJ. Oh. Um, he's like, he travels and does all this other stuff. And like, that's a, compl I don't want to ramble about my dad too much. Fair enough. But um, yeah, my, my kind of goal after I got out of high school, uh, me and my friends were already making music. And, you know, what usually you when. you do with music? Do you sing or play? Uh, I, I sing. I, I knew how to make. Um, I know I do studio production and uh, I did um, hip hop rap. Oh wow! So um, for me, you know, I'm talking to my friends. I'm like, okay, you know, how most people like have a thing where they like they do music and stuff. I'm like, well, this could actually be viable <laughs> yeah. since my dad is this guy. Yeah. So you know, we kind of have an end. So it seemed like a realistic goal. I didn't seem like I was wasting my time, and that's what I was doing. Uh, I was working on that, and then Rocket League just took all my time, and that now I'm here. Is that a good? Is that a good thing? Do you think? Like, are you are you happy that you're doing Rocket League um, at the moment instead of music? Or a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I always talk to my like friends who still do music because we're all still best friends, and they're super happy for me. They're super t like they're like, oh my god, dude, you're like they think I'm much more famous than I feel like I really am. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, bro, you're doing this and this, you're living the dream. I'm like, I, I guess. Like, okay. <laughs> In the last sort of four years, when you weren't obviously part of CRL and you were sort of in the bubble scene, did you ever doubt that decision? Uh, I'm gonna save that question for when we start talking about CRL stuff. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna answer that because there's there's it, it's it's really weird how this whole thing kind of worked out. Okay, but um, it's a good story. Okay, um, so I mean, I was gonna say, I mean, one of my other questions was, did you always want to work in entertainment? And it seems like. It's basically in your blood to be sort of not not necessarily like a front man of some kind of production, but just mm -hmm. be somewhere in there creating, doing um, something uh, to get something to like into the masses, whether it's music, whether it's casting, anything like that, whether it's streaming as well. Um, obviously, you also made um, content for Rocket League that wasn't um, casting. And that was um, sort of just before like season seven ish, where you were sort of like acting as like I fans of like these. various teams, being all fanboyish. Did I you? I absolutely love these. Yeah. So, 
can, can you explain what exactly that was if nobody saw them? Okay, uh, so during the season seven off season, we had a jumble of a roster, like roster mania, is what a lot of people yeah. call it, where roster teammates, changes. Yeah, where the ro- <laughs> the like the rosters were moving back and forth, and like there were so many different fan reactions based on who they got picked up. It was when Arsenal uh, got picked up by Space Station, right? And that was like yeah. the, the big the big movement. Yeah. Yeah, and then like so many other things started like you know d- d- so many different talks, and then NRG that's when they picked up Turbo Pulsa. Mm. So um, for me, I was like, I was like, oh wow, okay, this is you know I wanted to because again like like Stubby said, I've always done entertainment. Like I did stage play acting. Um, I did. I was Kaniki in the uh, stage play Grease. Like oh, I love being everything. a part of. I love being a part of everything. I did photography <laughs> for a little bit. You're a quintuple like, threat. Like, just, you've got I, everything going on. I just, I love being in creative spaces. So I was like, yo, what if, you know, I did a video. So I, I just called up one, um, one of my friends who has a bunch of, um, you know, photography equipment. He comes over to my house. I buy, like, every org shirt I have in NA and uh, just say, like, write a, write a script real quick. And I remember this, too, because I had a date in an hour. I poorly planned this. Like, this was so poorly planned. Like, he got over at 8, and I'm like, oh, I got to go at 9.30. Like, do you think we can do this at this time? He's like, uh, yeah, I think we can. And then we just we just shoot it, and it just goes. But um, it was super fun to edit. I was so happy I, I was able to, like, put it out. And the reception was fantastic. Like, I didn't expect to get as much reception as it did. I think we were all just amazed because Rocket League is ultimately quite a small eSport, right? It's... Got a point where there's really good content creators that use game footage and they do voice work, but there's very few content creators that I can think of beyond having a webcam in the bottom corner that do in real life stuff. You had Sunless Khans where he sort of had his Octane. Um, yeah, did, yeah, did the suit, car cosplay. He ran around. He did the car. That's it. The car cosplay. But really, most of the content that's made for Rocket League is you're looking at the game and then hearing someone's opinions over it. Maybe sort of, um, like I say, uh, performing to a webcam. But suddenly, when I was watching this, I was like, "Holy shit! This is actually him in a in a room." There's a he he likes Rocket League and he's making jokes. Like, I, I like Rocket League too. I get this. This is like my thing. So I, I think there's definitely a uh, there's a a gap in that market. So if you've got any more ideas for that sort of thing, I personally can only speak for myself, but I would love to watch more content like that. And, and I do. And the reason, like again, like I I talk to Cloud so much, and like we we <laughs> brainstorm stuff back and forth, and we see a lot of things that other people are doing in the world of just entertainment and content creation and there's so much room to like expand this and like hey let's make a rocket league version of this let's make let's do um an esports version of this there's not a lot of esports content that and there's not a lot of like like you said in-person content Mm. so again there's like a huge space for that that can be taken advantage of and i just kind of wanted to show that a little bit too like you know like there's there's room for stuff like this people are gonna like stuff like this let's try to show them at least and you know see what it see what happens so there's more coming yeah yes 100 percent. good okay Happy do as day. much as i can <laughs> um all right well i mean let's i think let's go, go to crl let's uh talk a little bit about that because that has been another huge step in your life recently where um it was a couple of weeks ago i suppose where you were announced that you would be working on the CRL as an analyst slash commentator. That yes. is fucking huge. And I am so happy for you. Somebody like added me in the reply to that saying, oh, Stumpy, what do you think of this? Like saying Dazzler. I was like, this is amazing. Like, I don't, <laughs> it's CRL and it's Dazzler. That is fantastic. So congratulations, first of all. Um, Thank you. How did it feel when you got that call saying like, hey, do you want to do CRL? Lol. <laughs> Uh, okay. It, it was unreal. It was, it was honestly unreal. And I, um, and now I can like explain like how that even happened. Mm. Um, so I have been working again. Um, I spent the past year or that past year working really closely with, uh, Psyonix. I was working with, uh, Gilly. Mm. Um, and she was brilliant. just, we love Gilly. she is. And this is again, this kind of answers someone's question that was on Twitter who were asking me like if I would ever like change my casting or whatever. I was mm. looking to improve my casting. And <clears throat> Gilly's a fantastic broadcaster and just an overall great person. And, you know, she um, we would meet just so she would give me tips, like tell me how I can improve on my casting. And like I have like a big notebook full of like notes and stuff, and I was really working to improve um, that much. So I already had like a relationship with them um, earlier on in the year. 
Uh, so we went to uh, do our meetup after Rival Series B stream. This is a co- I think like a month or so after Rival Series B stream. Mm. And uh, at that time, I was really you know I was kind of bummed out. I knew like I didn't get Rival Series um, for that season. So what season was this? I believe this was last season. Okay. Season, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so I was kind of bummed. I didn't really you know. It was again. I've been doing this for like four years, mm. so I I really just didn't understand where my place was. I knew I was getting good opportunities, mm-hmm. like with DreamHack, but mm. I was also uh, it, it's weird being like freelance because you don't if you're not a rival series or RLCS talent, you don't get kind of you know you don't you get treated differently in a weird way. Mm. Um, Obviously, people are some people are using you to get like lower rates on those guys. Yeah, um, I've been promised events, and next thing I know, I get an email saying that I'm not working them anymore uh, after I've cleared my calendar and everything. So I was a, definitely in a weird spot, and I didn't know if I wanted to um, like try doing an agency, maybe try to like branch out a little yeah. bit more so uh i brought that up when we did our meeting after you know the rival series b stream i really just said like hey you know i really don't know where i kind of stand right now um and i'm just trying to you know just figure out like what you know just I guess like it's trying to get see. a plan going right like try and say yeah. okay what's my next six months gonna look like so you're not just trying to you're not deferring a load of like maybe important things so that you might be working and i, I get that from a freelance perspective like we've been doing this for like two years coming on two years now and Full it's time. yeah yeah and it's like having to say yes i don't know what i'm gonna be doing in a month is very hard like to try and plan for there's also the yeah. question of would you in that situation were you making the right decision to focus solely on rocket league mm. or do other i see you've got mortal Kombat posters behind you so fighting uh, games yeah. presumably are something that you are aware of you know do other games start to cool in that situation as well yeah, exactly. And I mean, it was like that was really just me kind of like talk, reaching out to Gilly, not not as psionics, but like as a friend mm-hmm. to just, you know, get get some advice. And uh, we, we had a kind of a talk and, you know, she gave me some she gave me some really good advice. And then uh, she was like, so um, if, uh, if that's it, uh, there's something I want to talk to you about. And I'm like, <laughs> Like okay, <laughs> and, and then that's when that's when I got like that's when I got asked if I was interested in doing it, and I'm like yes, like uh, <laughs> like yes. Um, I love and, that she let you say all this and like open your yeah. heart and be like, look, Gilly, I don't know, I don't know if this is it. Is this? Can I continue doing this? She, in the head, she's thinking, I'm gonna about to blow this motherfucker's goddamn oh, that's, mind. <laughs> that's exactly she what Simon told you, Dazarin. She said, look, guys, I know it's been a long journey and it's been really tough. And I'm sorry to say, <laughs> you're going to have to do it all again. You're on CRL. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> so that that happened. And uh, that was just so like, again, that was, it, you know, it was mind blowing. Uh, I got, you know, I got kind of off off the call or whatever and freaked out and just like, oh, my God. But, uh, you know, it was just it was just am I interested at that point? Mm. So as things started to get, you know, I I. I I was in strong disbelief that it was all real. Like, you know how like something amazing happens and you're like, mm-hmm. something's going to happen here yeah, yeah. because something always Not happens. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it just, it didn't seem real uh, until, until I tweeted it. It just didn't seem real until I tweeted it. And then once I tweeted it and I got the immediate retweets and like all, everything came in. I think I cried for like the 15th time. <laughs> uh, uh, you have like the Rocket League finally follows me on Twitter and they're, they're oh, doing the whole that's welcome a good aboard. Moment. That's a and nice I moment. just, I'm telling you what, I, I sat in this very room, jumped up and down, just like, <laughs> I turned on music, danced until I was tired, and I like, cried, and got up and did it all over again for like a good two hours. So in the <laughs> run up to this, like o- over the years, what's been your profession? Have you been able to do this um, full time or have you been doing this alongside work or what? Uh, that's actually a very, that's another good story. So um, for, I think like half of my career, or probably three years, yeah, about, well, yeah, I'd say half. Half of my career, I did part-time, I was working part-time at Best Buy. Okay. And I was just doing it for, just getting all my equipment, my computers, monitors, like everything. Uh, same as what I was doing with the music. Uh, my stepbrother, who, my stepbrother kept asking me to work 
with him because he was like, I work in gaming and I don't know, like what. I kind of always recommend everyone works in retail at least once in their life, just because it's I terrible. Agree. Yeah, I, it's so it's so bad. Yeah, it's I used so to, bad. I used to work at um a uh, clothes uh, store in the UK called Next. I don't know if it's in America. Um, and it was in the middle of Cambridge, so a very busy place. And it's when I was at uni. The uh, everybody should work in retail or at least in customer service, whether that's like being wait staff or something, just to understand what it's like. And even just one person saying to you, oh, like, if you say have a good day or whatever, they then say, yeah, I hope you have a good day too. That changes your day entirely. Like, even just a tiny five words, and your day is completely turned around. Um, and then so you yeah, realise it when you then go to other people's stores, and you can sort of be that next level of polite to people who still work Yeah. in that industry. My, yeah. my horror story, just quickly, from retail, is uh, when I was at uni, I got this weekly work repping Panasonic TVs. But it turned out the store I went to was a Sony store. It wasn't called Sony store. It was called something else. It was like a third party one. But Sony sort of gave them a cut or whatever. So all the rest of the staff was sort of pushing Sony, Sony, Sony. I was their Mr. Panasonic boy. So they all hated me from day one. No one ever bloody came into the store. I watched the film Avatar on mute about 30 times in about four oh weekends. <laughs> I just Jesus. the concert on a loop. I just stood there all day doing nothing. I remember there was, um, I think my horror story was, uh, yeah. it was a vicar. Right, so this this vicar, um, she right, trust, trust. Okay, it was in next. That's what she said. Yeah. Right. She um she was like looking for like shirts and whatever. Um, and it was a two story store, so it was um lower floor was kids and women's wear. Upstairs was home and men's wear. Um, so I quickly popped down from men's wear to like um just go like check something. And she like says, hey, can you uh, just check if you got the size of this shirt? And I was like, yep. Yeah. I'll just go check it, and I go and see there's one more in stock. Um, I said, yep, there's one more in stock. Uh, um, I can go grab that. And she goes, okay, yeah, I'd like three, please. I was like, there's only one. So I can get you, like, one, that's fine. But you need to, like, all the other ones in, whatever. Then she goes, no, I want three now. So I'm like, right, well, we've got another store down the road. So I can ring them. And she goes, like, ring them. I'm like, okay. So I rang them. They didn't have anything. So I then went back to her and said, hi, yeah, there's literally this shirt. And then there's the one that we've got in stock, um, like, in the back room. I can get them, but you're still short one shirt. But we literally don't have any. And she goes, um, right, let me speak to your manager. I was like, well, do you want me to get the shirt? And she goes, get the shirt. I was like, I'll get the shirt then. <laughs> so I then like, went upstairs, and obviously I didn't even look for the shirt. I just, I went on my phone. <laughs> I, 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 was just, I was upstairs on my phone for like two minutes, just not caring. Went back down and said, sorry, looks like it's been sold. I don't know where it is. Um, and then she was like, right, get your manager now. So I got my manager, um, and then I could hear her shouting at her. Like saying, he was so rude to me. He wouldn't get me the third shirt. And she goes, okay, let me check stock then. She then checked the stock. And she goes, well, there's only a, one shirt. And she goes, I know there's one shirt. <laughs> it was a massive nightmare. Then my manager took me aside and like said, hey, I'm not going to tell you off properly because she was a bitch. Don't worry. <laughs> but she was a like, dickhead of a vicar. <laughs> Couldn't deal with it. Dickhead of a vicar. She was a dickhead That's of a vicar. So but yeah, I don't regret not helping her whatsoever. So always be nice to people. Because if... if if you ask them a question in retail and you're nice, I can confirm that they will do anything to help you out. They'll happily go above and beyond to do as much as possible. Yep, yep. That, that's 100% true. But yeah, I worked uh, I worked there for like two years, hated it. And <laughs> But I was like, sometimes retail puts like this really big mentality, like you will never find anything else in your life type, type thing on mm. you. So it was hard for me to break out. And then one day I got a push to like, yo, you should probably just like stop doing this. You're not happy here. And I'm like, okay. And then that's when my uh, brother, um, you know, hit me up. He was like, just send me your resume and we'll, we'll work it out. And I'm like, okay. And then uh, he sent me like the studio name. I'm like, Nether Realm. And then... <laughs> That's when the trailer for this game, Mortal Kombat 11, yeah. came out. Mm. And then I got on the team. Uh, I sent him a text like, is this for Mortal Kombat? He's like, yep. And I'm like, I'm so happy now. <laughs> That's so sick. So you're working in the realm now? No. Uh, they signed me up for a nine-month contract. They are looking at this moment to re-sign me for this year. We kind of have to figure this things out. This is casting you're talking about. No, this is they, – they signed me um, for um, – I work in the studio as a game tester. Okay. Yeah, so it's like completely, completely different. Um, but yeah, I was part of the, like I'm in the credits for this game. Uh, that's weird still. Uh, <laughs> so are they all um, devs that have signed that poster behind you? Yes, they signed it, and then I guess because I wanted to make sure that like, it was mine, I signed it. 
like right up there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we kind of have like a big signing day in the mm. studio and then everyone like there's just a bunch of markers and we all go around signing posters. Tell you what, hour. I've got a different question then. Um, obviously, so now that you've worked um, in game testing, that's sort of um, along the same lines as like in the game development realm. Um, mm-hmm. There's been a thing at the moment where a load of companies have basically opted not to crunch. Like, when the game's coming out, they've opted not to basically work their employees to the bone, and they've said, hey, look, we're actually going to give it another six months. We'll work it out in that time. We'll delay our game. And a lot of people have been happy about that. Have I don't know, obviously, what it was like at NetherRealm when um, MK11 was coming out, but what's your opinion on that? Do you think there's um, a change in the culture, then, um, from a game dev perspective, to be like, hey, look, we want our employees to be happy. We don't just want the game to come out, and then that's it. Yeah, there, there definitely is a change. Uh, when I was working at NetherRealm, there was a lot of things going on in terms of, like, articles coming out about former employees and, like, how, like, uh, with crunch and et cetera, et cetera. And I think I was in a weird position because, like, when people, most people who come in, like, QA is what, that's what they call it, game testing, mm-hmm. like, QA, quality assurance. Uh, that's really like an entry position into like the game dev space. Like you're in there and then you sort of like build a relationship with the company and you can move around. So a lot of people who are in there who are like much older than me, who went to college for game dev, who mm. are just trying to like start their career working at a studio. And me, I'm just like, hi, I'm a caster boy who <laughs> talks about video games. Have you met my brother? <laughs> It's like the big guy in the background. Huh? I'm so, yeah, I was just like, yeah, yeah, that's my brother. Um, I mean... I, like for me, the job wasn't as important as it was to other people, and like it was also much harder for them to get there than it was for me. Like I literally applied using my esports resume, but I got to see that I did. I, I guess it worked, <laughs> but uh, I I saw that um, crunch. Like we we crunched there. We definitely did. Mm. Like we had like twelve hour work days, etc. But it was always mandatory. Like I, I mean, not mandatory. It was optional. It was never mandatory. <laughs> it, was always... it was mandatory. It's all right. We had to do it. That's yeah, why it's okay. To. Otherwise, they'd take away our health care. Oh, well, no. they beat us and then take away our health care, so we couldn't it recover. Was... They'd practice was... out all the new fatalities on us if we, you know, didn't do crunch. But that's fine. Poor oh, Derek. His poor head God. is now in the ceiling for him. <laughs> But he's immortalized in the game, so it's okay. (laughs) Jesus Christ. It was always optional. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Legally, you have to say that. I, I appreciate it. It, it was always optional. We literally had our like timesheets emailed to us, and it was in bold. You don't have to do this. It's okay. So, but I, I enjoyed it, and uh, it was it was fun. What's it like? And it's I, like in game testing then, because you always see like people. Um, it's that uh, classic example of oh, if you love games, and then you go into game testing, you'll then hate games. <laughs> like, or you'll at least like hate this game because you're like having to look at every single. It's just jumping it. 55 times or whatever. Yeah, it? what's it, like, what would be a standard, like, working day when testing MK11 before release? Well, hopefully you like the game before, or, like, I it's either you like the game, it's great. or, yeah, it's either you, you A, like the game, or, B, you don't, nothing about the game. Mm. I, I was in kind of, like, the B realm, where I didn't, like, I played Street Fighter, and mm. I played, um, yeah, I played Street Fighter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and... I just really didn't, you know, for me, Mortal Kombat was always so hard. I was like, you have to press a button to block? I'm like, what is this? <laughs> but as I as I got to play it more and, like, learn, I was learning and improving at the game because... I was going to say, were something. you getting really good at it? I was getting really good at it. Because we had, like, t- you know, there are some people there who are full-time who, like, used to be ex-pro players who worked at the studio. Oh, wow. So they were beating my ass, and I was like, oh, hold on, let me... You know, let me learn this from this. So I was always like, I loved, I, I'm a super competitive person. I love to improve and like get better and mm. stuff like that. So I was getting better at the game. But also, uh, to answer your question, it's a lot of like, it's a lot of repetition because when a new patch or a new build comes out, you have to test everything to like, you have to pretty much go through everything all over again uh, to see if it's working or mm. if it doesn't crash the game. The main thing is to make sure it doesn't crash the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Yeah, you. We obviously it wasn't like we're te- me as a, a singular person is testing the entire game all over again because <laughs> that's just that's just un- not yeah, realistic. Yeah, too much. Yeah, that campaign is at least eight hours. Like I'm yeah. gonna, you know. So we split everything up into groups, and if there was something that needed more attention, then we would focus more people whose stuff you know would work. Like I would have just uh, at, after release, 
it would just be okay i'm testing versus to make sure it doesn't crash mm. uh, you know do one match and then do another match and then afterwards we just do our little kind of tasks on our own for the rest of the day so but, obviously uh, mk11 yeah. didn't release without issue either like a lot of people were saying obviously it's not just about the game performance it was more to do with like obviously the microtransactions all that kind of stuff right, which right. obviously isn't your um area anyway but it must be quite frustrating to like See, say, like, obviously, we're testing it all. You're like, okay, yeah, we've made sure nothing's going to be crashing it. Then in, like, two days, somebody reports, yep, yeah, this crashes it. You're like, mother fuck, I didn't think to do that. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Like, did that happen at all? There's definitely been times where we've seen something on Twitter that we just, we were like, what? How did that happen? <laughs> and, like, sometimes, you know, like, we try to, like, pull the replay to see if, you know, we can, if we can pull the replay, we'll try to pull the replay. But we'll also try to just recreate what we saw in the studio. And then mm. once we do that, we find even more stuff. And then we're like, oh, okay. Like, there's a, if you love complaining about <laughs> games, uh, like, it's like, if you're one of those people who, Rocket League, for example, they post a tweet and you're like, oh, please fix this. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's well, like, completely irrelevant. We're giving you a free map, but please fix this one bug. Please fix it. It's like, well, yeah, just I like, don't no matter the what happens. guys are focusing on that. <laughs> like, like, they retweet my tweet of me atta- uh, and I get a reply saying, Oh, this is really great and all, but like I got demoed and I really don't think it should have happened. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you're one of those people, then you probably will really enjoy being like a game tester because instead of you complaining on Twitter, there's actually systems in place and things that you can fill out to where this goes directly to the developers. I'm pleasantly surprised with how positive you are about your game testing experience because I just remember a. Um, do you guys know the website cracked.com? Did you ever use yeah. that back when it was? Yeah, cool? did you use that? Heard of it? Yeah. There, there was there was a they used to do like lists five things you can't believe will kill you do you know what i mean mm. about that and one of them was you know your classic five jobs that sound great but aren't one was yeah. poker player one was game tester ice cream tester or whatever. yeah they all get some sort of horrible illness from the ice cream like yeah cold blood or something yeah um but yeah so the game testing one they in that article they basically said that when you test a game you don't play the game what it is is they put in a new box and you have to punch the box and then you have to restart the game and then punch the same box and just do it over and over again like repeating this uh. one little task and that's always the the version of game testing I had in my mind, but you've presented something much more positive. So that that's nice. I'm happy to yeah, hear that. Yeah, like I literally got on and like, you know, we have the Xbox game version of the game and mm-hmm. it's the same game that's like, this is the game everyone is going to play. Mm. So we need to make sure like that game works in, in all fashions. So we're literally just launching the game. That's and fine. it even got to a point that like, if we didn't have anything going on, I would bring my own PlayStation and hook it up and play the game and just play online matches and try to get good and like that that would literally so you were so to take a break from testing the game you would go and play the game yeah (laughs) because why are they gonna get mad like they're not gonna get mad because i'm playing the game i I realize that you're not doing it properly are they just like oh good work keep keep that up that's mortal Kombat. that is you've not gone home for three days and you're like yes boss it's fine it's the crunch it's optional climbing the ladder Sometimes um, you gotta climb a ladder, and you know you might even. Sometimes we even did find stuff playing the like for me, like I would play, and I'm sweating. So you know, definitely when you're like tryharding at a game, that's when you tend to find everything yeah. wrong with it. Yeah. So I'm like, how did this? And mm-hmm. I'm and I go over to my coworkers who's sitting right next to me. We need to test this right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we just get it. We load just up to a prove that you didn't lose properly. Just to prove that it was right. the game's fault and so, not your own. Something of that nature. So it's, it all ties around at the end of the at the end of the day. But you know, it's. Uh, I, it's fun. Uh, but to kind of like push on more of Cole's aspect, mm. there has there are times where it's been stressful. Like when the mm. article started coming out, and then we also, actually, I probably shouldn't say this. I probably shouldn't say this here. <laughs> this is probably That's not fine. the good time. That's fine. That's okay. We don't need. We don't need to cover that. That's all alright. So if we go back to uh, CRL, because we, we, we got, got a good tracks. segue. I've got a good oh. segue. Carl, I've got a really good segue. Yeah, do it. All right, Daz, when you've sold us on game testing, all right, now it's time okay. to sell us on CRL. That was a good segue, right? Okay. I expected a pun. Why would you expect a pun? It was just a good, clean, nice, classic segue. Well, because the fact that you interrupted me doing a yeah, yours clean shit. segue. It was fine. I was just saying, let's talk about CRL fine. again. Yeah, mine was good. So we've improved. So Daz, okay. why is CRL so good? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, okay. Uh... So CRL, I think, is good for a number of reasons. I think in terms of the entire Rocket League esports space, is probably it has the most, and I don't even want to use this word, but it's true. It has the most content in mm. the entire um, 
RL esports scene in terms of just you know. I know people who love Rocket League Esports just like you guys, mm -hmm. love RLCS, Rival Series, etc., but they will watch CRL every day of the week from just how much they love the broadcast. Like, the broadcast is very relaxed. Um, it's You get to really see, like, personal sides on both players and on the commentators themselves. And in terms of what it does for the kids, I mean, the, like... You have RLCS players playing in this just because of how much it benefits them in, mm. in college. Like, it do, and if if I'm correct, I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure CRL uh, um, has to be one of, if not the biggest collegiate like kind of tournament mm. in terms of gaming. Like, I don't okay. really know any kind of like collegiate space uh, gaming tournament that's like as big as CRL. And, turn, and like there are people I'm hearing rumors now of uh, colleges who are offering kids full rides to play Rocket League. Now, that is just that's that, pretty for me, huge. Yeah, yeah. That, that that's unbelievable. And um, I think we'll probably hear more of that because of, from the people I've heard from, they're very popular. Mm. So if that's the case, like and if that comes, you know, into reality, then that'll be huge. But mm. yeah, I, you know. Uh, I, I, I've, I've seen the tweets from, from you guys. Yeah. So, you know, I think my, my issue with it, it's, uh, in all fairness, it's nothing to do with like, so I've seen some of the, um, content that does come out of it from, uh, Jorby and Corelli and stuff. And that is always hilarious. Like that's what made me really, it's like one of the things that I really first saw from Corelli where I just loved how fucking dumb loads of it was it was just stupid stuff um and i absolutely adore that i think the the personality coming through is absolutely fantastic i think it's something that should go on to bigger broadcasts as well onto rlcs and stuff um but as a uh as a european i i think it's, i think i struggle i think that i think my main block is i don't know these colleges i don't know some of the places i don't know the stakes behind it i don't know any of the backstory if like say two universities like hate each other or whatever and there's gonna be a massive match for it i think the entire collegiate space is something that i've never needed to consider and it's so far removed uh, okay, and i can i can understand where you're coming from when mm. you say that at the same time there are people who say the same thing about the rival series and that's why yeah, they don't watch the rival series mm. you know what i mean so uh, I, I won't say that CRL is for everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you love Rocket League and you just like like the personalities and such, then you'll have a good time watching it's CRL, It's something that I'd love obviously. to enjoy. Like, yeah. like, it's more Rocket League content. Like, how... There's, if there's something that I'm more than anything, it's the lack of Rocket League content. So the fact that there's something out there that I'm currently not engaging with, and obviously I know, Cole, you're not engaging with it either, is there's something that we can get involved with and actually sort of understand and watch and not have to wait for the rlcs and not have to wait for rlrs or the olympics or whatever it ends up being then that's fantastic and happy days it sort of fills that competitive niche yeah. um, i think also i've heard the, the gameplay of it um it's not obviously on the rlcs level but, but i wouldn't necessarily expect it to be because these kids aren't pro like that's completely fair mm -hmm. um same as like college football isn't going to be as good as like the nfl it's going to be like really good but it's not going to be at that level um is it still a like very high ranked GC gameplay, and it's stuff that you can see? Holy shit! How have they done that? Uh yes, I can say yes mainly because I know some of the players that are playing in there. Um, mm. And so usually, I would say like it, it. There's a range. There's definitely a skill range, which is obviously different than most Rocket League tournaments. Like yeah. you'd have like these are obviously the best players in the world. Rival series, okay, these are the players close to that. But mm -hmm. you know, CRL doesn't have like a rank lockout so to speak but you know what i mean they have qualifiers mm. and you have to do well in those qualifiers but you know that's where kind of like i guess the the overall team rank question kind of gets into there but that, at the same time like i said we have R rlcs players playing we have illusion from ghost we have ajax from e united playing in there and then um we also have e united's coach fire who um is also playing in there and then it's also a way for young talent to make a name for themselves like i, I know the the boys uh, the the casters they talk night and day about Tristan and how he's like an insanely good player and you know it kind of gives these guys a stage to build a name for themselves if they want to compete in Rocket League competitively kind of put them in that competitive environment and the more players and uh different teams form and get involved then the more we can see the competition rise 
I think it can definitely be a good thing as well to have this sort of variance in skill level. I remember when we mm-hmm. used to do the Gfinity Elite series, which is the thing that I think we've done that's most similar to what, how you describe the CRL. So that was, um, if you don't if you know what that was, it was sort of a it was a franchise league, but it was sort of like it existed in a bubble outside of the RLCS. But so it, it had, had RLCS teams vitality. in it. Yeah, it had vitality. Yeah, I loved it. And then it had some sort of slightly lower level teams, like your epsilons and stuff, guys who will get into like the top eight in open tournaments, but never really break through. But I thought I thought that was good because that that went on around the time of season five RLCS, and at that point. That was when the Dignitas way of playing, the pure rotational style, everyone was doing it. There wasn't much flair. It wasn't until Cloud9 dicked him in Season 6 that yeah. everyone started flip resetting and um, a little bit more freedom came back. And because of that, to me at the time, top level Rocket League could be a little bit dull because it was just challenge, 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 challenge all the time. Yeah. Whereas when you watch the Gfinity Elite series, it'd be challenge, challenge, challenge. Oh my God, someone's missed. How on earth has he missed that? And then the person's missed the shot and then the next thing you know, he's got a flip reset. It's like, what? How is, how is the same person <laughs> doing both those things? And why can't he defend on his backboard ever? And you start to notice these little quirks. Like, oh, this player doesn't know how to back post rotate. If he only did that one thing, he'd suddenly be so much better. But it's part of the fun of watching it, just wondering what sort of mistakes we're going to see today. So I imagine yeah. CRL can sort of provide you of that same just a little bit like, messier oh it's the guy who loves a flip reset but doesn't know how to pinch or whatever i don't know and they've yeah. all got these sort of things that they can do and that they can't do and then as well as that you've also got um one of the clips from the crl that's gone most viral recently is from a guy called is it connor oh well, that dude was raging at his teammate yeah oh, that, that was happen so often? funny that was brilliant oh, yeah goodness, that's what we that want more so of funny. i think that like the more of that that gets shared on Twitter, I'm probably not, I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to watch an entire broadcast, but if a clip like that comes out of someone rage quitting, mm-hmm. that's the stuff that I'm going to watch. It was so a lot of like, Reddit lot as of, well. Yeah, and there are a lot of sort of colourful characters in the Sierra like that. Yeah, uh, just to backtrack really quickly. One, I love the Gfinity Elite series. That was hey, that was such huh. a good broadcast. I remember I used to work overnights at Best Buy, and like you guys were doing the grand finals, and I would listen to Greg, and I have a blast. It's, I'm I'm the only one in the store. I put on like the most expensive speakers that no are way, super loud, really? Wait, and just like have it on my phone. At one point, did you tweet? I, I saying, might have because I remember because I loved I loved that final like after. I think it was like Greg and an onset. Yeah, I think it was like after oh, one of the um, broadcasts. I remember either you tweeted or DM'd or something and you said that you were working in Best Buy and like it was just you there and you were blasting it in the store. And I was thinking, yeah. somebody outside of this arena knows that the Gfinity Elite series is happening. <laughs> Holy shit. And he's not on Facebook. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, God. I remember that. Uh, no. But, yeah, that that broadcast was was good, definitely good fun. But uh, also, to like kind of tie in about where you're talking about like gameplay-wise, it's, it's a weird – it's a great balance because it makes the games a little bit more exciting. Mm-hmm. The fact that you know, okay, these guys aren't the best of the best. We can't expect perfect Rocket League. So when it does kind of fall short, mm-hmm. then it also gives us uh, as broadcasters a good chance to explain things, you know, more fleshed out. Like, okay, you know, if he would have done this, then he you know, this would have happened. Or, okay, he probably shouldn't have changed this early, and this is why. Because remember, this these guys, I think it's a three man cast when uh, they get on and do. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking broadcast, at the. So. so I've got the CRL pages open for Eastern and Western. Um, and the only confirmed commentator is you. Yeah. So know, is right? it going to be That's... a one-man show? Is that all we can expect? <laughs> if because anyone can, you that can. That is own. a big first <laughs> season that you've got. If it's a one-man show doing everything, can you for like do an eight acapella hours? version of like the RCS you know? themes. You go like da 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 da. <laughs> It's just like, welcome guys to CRL. I'm Dazrin, and join with me is no one. <laughs> uh, excited to get there. <laughs> join, join, join with me is Connor. Connor, what do you think? You then run up to then, because there's no cameraman. You have to run up and move the camera right. to like, look at the empty chairs. Um, uh, but also to kind of talk about like that rage factor, like Connor. Mm. Um, and to kind of tie this back into the skirmish, we had a team compete. Uh, the team name was called Allah's Warriors. Oh, and wait, what's the that? Team- the team name was called Allah's Warriors. Al- oh, okay. Allah. You did right, say okay. okay. As in Allah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't quite yeah. get it. I thought it was like... <laughs> Allah, like, like I didn't make the team name. Something? Okay. I didn't make the name, and you can judge them as Allah's much as Warriors. you like. Okay. But that being said, the team consisted of um, United Coach, uh, Fire, uh, CRL player, t uh, Bates. Oh, him. And if you've ever, if you've ever heard of... Uh, if you've Sorry. ever heard of Aspira, <laughs> wait, what happened? No, sorry, right? right. It's it's, yeah, it's just a, a, fuck it. Let's yeah, go some, in. Let's go into it. Right. Sometimes so. you get a bad vibe from people, right? 
and mm. I'm sure he's a lovely guy. I didn't like his stage persona. It was this is fire, by the bit, way. Yeah, okay. this, it was a little bit try hard Call of Duty, and he was a bit much. And then when his team won, he did like muscles up, and I just thought, <laughs> fuck off. My like, issue with that, I didn't. My, oh, I, I'm, yeah. If there's somebody who is genuinely like really jacked. And they do, and they like, and they do like a flex. I'm like, you know, like onset or whatever. Huge dude. If he yep. flexes, I'm like, fucking hell. G- go on, get him out. Kado right? could get away with it as well. I see. That's oh where God. I. Oh, don't... Is, he, is he too sensitive for you? I think Kado's got a hell of a bod. I he don't. Flex. I think he's very toned, very very toned. But I'm talking yeah, like big muscular, like big bloke. Right. right? Like, I love okay, that. I want a big bloke to do it. I think my issue was when he flexed as well. <laughs> you could really prominently see his nipples. <laughs> like, really prominently like they were just there like staring at everybody in madrid oh my God. and okay, i was I, I was really happy when they ended up yeah. losing to be honest i remember thinking if i was on a united <laughs> team right now i'd be thinking please can we lose just so oh i can God. i'm fed up with this man shouting at me like, yeah. i'm trying to concentrate on the fucking game here and he's there screaming in my face but, go on, let's go. but i did i did like that he got really involved <laughs> i <laughs> He's not a Rocket League man, is he? Isn't he like from EU rather than Rocket League itself? Is that correct? No, he's, no, no, he's, he's a Rocket League dude. Oh, he's okay. He was there. Right. That's completely wrong. He was there. Okay, Fire was their sub who uh, became their coach for for the World Championship. Yeah. And uh, I, it, that that nipple comment is hilarious. <laughs> they took pictures. They took pictures and like you know they were posting pictures in this Discord I'm in, and I literally said, "Fire, you look like you have bullet nipples. Like, what's going <laughs> oh, you on?" Noticed bro? Like, it as well. Yeah, I was like, oh my god. But um, the whole flexing thing is kind of like, uh, there's obviously a, a thing, a history behind that. Just like more, more so like Fire used to always say that he would bench more than like certain players. Yeah. Um, there's a thing called Swole Patrol where it's like Fire rolled this, uh, Spuda, and there's someone oh, else. Oh, Spuda I'm Jack. I think- I've never seen a picture of him. Well, he, he he's getting there. He's, he's working I've seen on pictures it. of him posting uh, images from the gym, so I know he's. Oh, been, yeah. Hang on, let me go to out. his. I'm gonna go to this. It's gonna be just. It's gonna be fucking pictures of dogs and hats, isn't it? No. That's all there's gonna be at the moment <laughs> on this fucking Twitter. But but to kind of give you context oh, yeah. behind it, like yeah, like you know, kind of the whole, like he takes like lifting and stuff very seriously. I think. Do you remember they had? Uh, I don't know if you so, you guys saw it personally, but they had a whole arm wrestling contest at Madrid. Yeah, I did. I did see like videos of that, like backstage yeah. on the little table. Yeah. So they talked about that for. Uh, a decent amount of time <laughs> but um so yeah i've got i've got no issue with fire i think end of the day i love that there's somebody who's being so incredibly out there and i do i love big personalities like that where it's so like utterly holy shit you're really intense like he was like turning to other like the, whoever they were playing at the time and like gesturing towards them saying get the fuck out and yeah like, he was proper okay that's like quite big it. but i'm sort of into it Fair i play. don't think it suited rocket league i mean rettles did it as well and i've always said that it takes a special sort of personality to be able to get away with that and do it well and uh i've, I've sent you guys a picture it looks a little bit pure <laughs> anger to me <laughs> you know you i know. think it works with rettles because ultimately he's just a shitty little kid <laughs> yeah exactly and i'm like end it. of the day if he gets a bit too aggy i could put him in the fucking ground <laughs> but with fire i'm like look yeah, yeah. You're scared i know i, I know you could break some drywall i know you could really do some damage to a flimsy door but yeah no i'm <laughs> fair play i like that he was so big but for some reason he just rubbed me the wrong way and i can't possibly think why <laughs> that, that... <laughs> You probably aren't the first. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. Right. And I doubt he cares either. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, good oh, on yeah. him. Please keep doing it for the record. Yeah, Fire. Exactly. Please keep being a massive, huge personality. Well, it's important. It is mental. important for Rocket League because it's yeah. important that there's people that we want to see win and people want to see lose. That's yeah. what made it a good event, you know? Yeah, exactly. But like to, to like bring it back is just like they um, again. Fire has been a CRL player. He's been a CRL uh, champion, I believe, in season two. Mm-hmm. And, what season um, is CRL on now? Sorry. Uh, well, I think they're calling it the spring 2020 season. I think they're moving away from the numbers now. Okay. Yeah, they run's okay. Yeah. Yeah, so... I saw the thing. There's loads of qualifiers, and there's like Western and Eastern conferences, and there's a lot. There's a lot of American terms, which again, I think does gen- genuinely distance me a little bit more from it. Where it's like saying about like it, this is the fall open. I'm like okay, and it's also like a conference is going on, and it's a little bit sponsored like, by Gatorade. Yeah, exactly. Let's go to Cheese It's Lounge. <laughs> it's a little bit of that, but no, yeah. I mean, tell you what, Dazrim, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch okay. the 
Um, first broadcast of each of the Western and the uh, Eastern. It's league play, they? right? It's like a third. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah, it's a round robin league play. Uh, it starts it's like a week from now. Uh, week one, yeah, week one is February third. Next Monday. Uh, right, and I'll be on the broadcast a week after that. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a watch because I've I've said I've said my piece about CRL, but I'm happy to have my mind changed. More Rocket League content is absolutely brilliant, and I love everybody who's working on CRL as well. Presuming the same guys come back, obviously. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give that a watch. Cold, reckon you're gonna give just like yeah, let's, a look do at it, some let's, clips. let's do a fucking viewing party. Well, no, let's I go the whole take it in. Let's get popcorn. No, I wanna, I wanna do, let's and... do drinking games. No. Dip down a drink. Come, why can't you enjoy anything about <laughs> drinking? <laughs> Drinking games. It's that doesn't change anything. No, no, it's a game. Don't you see? <laughs> no, it's alcoholism, my man. Oh, okay, shit. well, Cyril, I'll give it a look. Cole, are you gonna give it a watch? Yeah, why not? I'll give it a go. Absolutely. Good man. Yes, I want. No, I want to see Dazzer in. That's the thing. Like, yeah, things like this, new events that you haven't seen before, and any anything sort of like films, TV shows, you often tune into them because you like one actor mm-hmm. you're like oh i remember that guy from this show i'll try that out and then you're sort of that's what leads you to jump to that and as when you are somebody that i would like to see in that sort of professional scene and i look forward to seeing you in this and also i do want more irl sketches for for rocket league please yeah oh okay just yeah. as an aside just to remind you in case you've forgotten yeah yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get back to work. Yeah, you can. Uh, uh, after this podcast, know. just get working on them. To be honest, yeah, get them over sketch. and yeah, yeah. Go just on a date. I gotta wait for inspiration to strike. Yeah, just. Uh, I gotta order more jerseys. I want to do <laughs> Europe. There's so much, uh, so much to do. So Big little task. Released their 2020 jersey, and oh my god, it looks ten times better than their old one. I held off on ordering really? the 2019 one because I wasn't actually that keen on it. Um, Cole, have you seen it? Or oh, Dazzle? Any good one now? Um, I'll, here it is. It's the Dig Official 2020 jersey. It reminds me of G2's jersey with like sort of the splash of color. Oh yeah. And I oh, love yeah, I that like style. That. G2's my favorite jersey Ooh. out there. Um, uh, I think it looks great. I think it's really, really nice. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not a fan. You're not a fine. fan. No, that's fine though. You know, that's the beauty of opinions. Dazarin, you've got a deciding opinion. You? Either I'm wrong or Stumpy's wrong. Who's wrong, Dazarin? D- um, I I feel like no one's wrong. You either like it or you don't. No, Dazarin. Uh, we need Dazarin. somebody needs we to need win. To know. Someone needs to win? Yeah, always. Yeah, I'd lose. Well, I, I like the jersey. Yeah! Like, yes, I win! That means I like it now. Damn it. Come on. <laughs> um, I actually made um, a bet with uh, my best mate, two-time world champion, Violent Panda. Um, mm. And he <laughs> he said that if he wins next world, he is going to buy me a Dignitas official 2020 pro jersey and put the name on the back of Panda's best mate. Can you put Panda's best mate, Gobbo? No, just Panda's best mate. Gobbets. No, Panda's best mate. That's it. Goblin. No, just Panda's best mate. All right. Cole. Fucking hell. I'm trying old, to get involved. The old, the old stump. I'm not getting involved. The old stump would have had Goblin on there as no, well. No, he wouldn't. You know for a fact he wouldn't. And also that doesn't work on me. It works on you, you knobhead. <laughs> Twitter has been vocal once again. And there's a few questions for you, Dazrin. So should we do a little bit of quick fire to end this episode of the Poddy C? Are we ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. The first question from Twitter um, is, who has been your favorite person to work with in the RL Esports scene from at Terziak underscore? <laughs> uh, that's really tough. That's actually really, that's really tough. Mm. Wow. Because they're like, the RL Esports scene has a lot of good people. Mm. And they're, they're really hilarious. I think my favorite probably is Stax though. Ah, oh, why Stax? Because we both hate each other, and it's fantastic <laughs> when we get on the broadcast together. It's so it's like it's so much fun. Like Stax is definitely one of my best friends. Uh, we play a bunch of games. Like we did a run through on stream with Borderlands Three. Aww. Like me and Stax are, are really good homies. Um, and yeah, our our kind of like on cam, like off cam kind of banter slash support has always been really fun. So I would probably say like Stax is like my favorite to work with. Aww. Yeah, but that leads on. Uh, neatly to the next question, which is, can you do your best Stax impression on the Poddy C from at Rams underscore RL? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try. Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. Look now, Triple Trouble may have Bluey who drops 45 points a game, but uh, when we bring them into the rival series and he plays against all these other teams. 
I don't think that uh, he'll be able to stand up with the rest of the pack. He may be an RLCS MVP, but this kid does shine in the rival series, Dazarin, and I think we're going to see that. Obama? Is that you? No. I, oh, my God. Was it Obama? Oh, God. That was a little bit Obama and a little this bit of This country does need more stacks. Uh, this country is... Uh, oh, my God. That was amazing. I could do, I could do a good Obama impression for sure. God, uh, that, was, that was actually genuinely... Quite a good stacks impression. Cole, do you want to give it a go? Uh, okay. <clears throat> and then here's Dazarin on the left side. He's got somebody else in the center. Takes it up the wall. It's going to go in. And there it is. This is 4.5th goal of the season. It's Dazarin with the finish. I like the stats. The stats yep. in there as well. He's a very there you stat go. That's man. A, that's, a, that's a thing. That's a thing that I noticed with my perception. Nice. Very good. He loves right, next question. Go on, Stumpy. You want to go. So you want someone to How ask. You have a go as well. What? Stumpy, go on. Go, go. go as well. <clears throat> go on. <clears throat> Imagine it just oh. buzzed out. Oh, Perfect. Lord. Okay. Right. <clears throat> what the fuck does stack sound like? Okay. Uh, I don't know, Dazrin. It's, uh, you know, he, he, he does a good performance on the day, but, you know, it, it's nothing quite like hockey. Hockey, it gets a massive crowd, and I'm just really... Quite a big fan. Yeah, that's my stacks. I feel it. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Well done, everybody. That's Yay! Fun. Fun okay, next question. Uh, from at John Sonics. How much, if at all, will you change your style of casting for a Sonic-sponsored event? P.S. Never change. Uh, well, considering that I spent an entire year trying to change my casting, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think a lot. <laughs> I think I spent a lot of time... Uh, <laughs> Changing, changing my my style of casting. So yeah, there's, there's that. Uh, but I never change who I am personality wise. That's the one. That's so uh, you know, as long as like I I love to like let my personality flow through when I can. But I also want to be you know in terms of like the broadcast. I really do think that it it's me telling a story, and I want to do that to the best of my ability. So whatever helps me get to that point and allows me to do what I want to do. Uh, that's how much I'll change. What got you into casting from at the Guan Yin? Guan! Um, <laughs> I always say Guan. That's like our thing. Uh, <laughs> what got me into casting? Um, just I get like I found a Reddit thread one day. It was really just a Reddit thread, and then I uh, then I just once I did it one time and saw the community and wanted to be involved with the community. Everything just took off from there. What was that Reddit thread for? I meant to ask at the time. Was it for one of the uh, TOs at the time, one of the small ones? Yeah, it was a community org, uh, Mythical Esports. Uh, that was when they just got started. It was mainly guys from like Shift Pro League who were starting Mythical Esports. They were like, hey, if you don't know how to cast, don't worry. We'll teach you how to cast. I'm like, oh. oh. I was like, oh, well, all right, let me just try this. And then cool. just, just took <clears> off. Um. Any games you'd love to commentate besides Rocket League from at Pluto? Pluto. Pluto. Hey, Pluto. Pluto. Uh, <clears throat> I did want to do MK just because I actually like studied the game enough to like know about it uh, to where I could do it. Uh, definitely Halo. Love Halo. Um, Gears, because I used to play Gears professionally. Uh, and I so, think... What? Sorry, hang on. Sorry, you just dropped that in. You used to play <laughs> Gears professionally. Yeah, I played uh, <laughs> Gears 2 and Gears 3. I, uh, I played in the competitive scene. What? How long for? Probably until I was, I want to say like 17 or 18. Oh my god! And then, I, yeah, and then I stopped. Like our team disbanded. And then afterwards, uh, we're, we're, it was all cool. But uh, afterwards, that's when I started just focusing on music stuff. Mm. Like, there's a very short span there, but I spent my I spent my like four like I won't say fourteen, maybe like fifteen, <laughs> to, like seventeen, like literally running like a, a gears team. That was oh my god, that was definitely weird. Is there anything you're not good at? What What are you <laughs> bad at, Dazarin? That's I need to I need you to tell me yeah. something you're bad at because I'm. Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm. I don't know. Like. I feel like I'm not good at Rocket League. I always feel like I'm not good at Rocket what League. What rank are like... you? What rating are you? Uh, I peaked a GC seventeen thirty seven. Yeah, you're shit then. Yeah, you're yeah. shit. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to hit eighteen hundred, but I just can't. Oh, we've all been there. Yeah, that's what. That's yeah, yeah, we've all been there. I'm now at sixteen fifty, and everything's suppressing again. I hit seventeen eighty six, Dazarin. And I was yeah. so close, and then just the slide began, and then I did some solo queuing off stream, and. Mm -hmm, that's me. I think we're literally the, like the same MR right now. Oh, man. 
We'll play together at some point and we'll just smash it. I am here. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just. Or across the Atlantic. We can see if Greg wants to play well. us or something. Or maybe Violet yeah. Panda will want to play no, us. No, I'm here. So. No, that, that no, could be Panda. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a friend of Subpar, but in HD. No, he's a friend definitely, of Definitely. So. Definitely not Fisho, though. Yeah. I saw that clip. <laughs> yeah. We're, oh, fucking Fisho, man. He's a short. How was that EU skirmish final that was casted very professionally from at Macaulay Beard? Oh, that was the one where... Okay, so another cool thing about Skirmish is that I let anybody jump in on the cast with me. Like, I go live, and I'll sit there until someone says, hey, you know, can I hop in? And I'm like, sure. And they they just come in. So one of those people was Speed. Speed and Fruity got into it, and it allowed Speed to... <laughs> it allowed Speed to come in on the broadcast, and that was hilarious. <laughs> uh, it was me, Speed, and Jorby, and we literally spent the entire final making fun of other casters like i think i think the the funniest part of it was we probably spent an hour trying to do our best james bond impression and then after the stream we hosted james bond <laughs> <laughs> and then someone was like yo james bond i love how uh how you were in the skirmish today and he was like i wasn't in the skirmish today <laughs> he was like you guys were talking shit <laughs> oh the so next funny. question is from speed asking what was it like casting with the speed underscore rl I think Speed has a very promising career as a esports commentator. Uh, but not I think a player. Speed, I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not a human being in the professional world. Something to do with Rocket League, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Speed! Speed is actually great. He is a, a a great personality. I harassed him until he followed me back on Twitter that same day. Respect. Because I was like, oh yeah, you know, so you, you got to get it how you live. But uh, no, Speed. Speed was so. I mean, it was okay. So our final was three. We had Danny Boy, uh, who's an Danny Irish boy. caster. Oh, he, I, oh, I love bacon, Danny. Bacon. Oh, bacon. He's great. Danny has the uh, – so you guys know the emo Keck W, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, with, the, with the laugh. He laughs just like that guy. Yeah. Like, so we made him laugh, and then we spent 30 minutes laughing at his laugh, <laughs> and then we have the entire Twitch chat going Keck W, and we're all just – we all probably spent, like, <laughs> like, half a series. If not, we spent a whole series talking about – Everything other than the game. <laughs> like, we didn't talk about the game the whole series, except for saying, oh, they won that game. And then we just kept laughing. <laughs> we love Danny. We're big fans of Danny. Yeah. Yeah, I love so, him. So, that was definitely, that was the best way to, like, top off EU Skirmish. I, I was happy that the speed came by. Who is officially, unofficially, the cutest subpar crew member, and why is it Doomsy from at Shacked? Wow. Um, that's, I mean... Doomsy, Doomsy is a brilliant hot man, and I think I think the only reason I can really go along with that is because Topping Cole is quite the feat. I think I think Cole is the hottest, but oh. obviously Whoa. Doomsy is the is oh, the hottest. Catherine, you've got a type, and it's you're like a ginger man, do you? Ah, uh, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> right, next question. Next question. Mate. It's all right. Yeah, okay. Well, it's, it's yeah, fun. next question. We're done with that one. So now it's next question. It's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. Out oh, of yeah, okay. Shut up. Outside of Rocket. <laughs> shut up. I'm trying to shut up. Outside of Rocket League, what are your shut up, Cole? What are your dreams and ambitions from at Boy Legend? Uh, I think I've always had a uh, a kind of want in life to like just kind of like spread. A more positive message i feel like we're surrounded by negativity in our world every day uh and i've always just wanted to be someone or be able to like put that in that's one of the reasons why i originally started to do music this is just because it was a way for me to express myself and it was a way i just felt like if i could get into a position where i could like people would actually listen to what i say i'd be able to have a positive impact so that's all i've, I've ever really wanted to do just on the music thing quickly <clears throat> have you um put any music on twitter or would you uh i have before or uh like a long time ago i like i haven't made a song in probably like a year or so so uh but every time i've done like either like freestyles with friends or mm -hmm. like shown some music I've, it's always gotten a positive reception cool like uh you know what crow used to do is like yeah, uh, it's kind of like mm -hmm. diss traps uh i was like oh i've seen you've been rapping this is like when he first started doing it i was like oh he's like yeah i was like i used to rap too like here's a song he's like dude you are a much way better rapper than me I'm like oh my god <laughs> i'm like oh i was like okay but it's all it's all good fun i've always done something that no matter what <clears> like <throat> even rocket league you could say it's like i guess like a dream for me too because i don't think i've ever been involved in anything i'm not passionate about mm. i've always like except i guess best buy but i kind of was passionate <laughs> for that i was passionate for the discount let's be honest you like, wanted that to was... be the best buy the best, I, 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 on, the best of one of all. 
I really loved uh, buying uh, HDMI cables for $2. So, uh, <laughs> That's a real passion of yours, rapping, gaming, and buying HDMI cables for $2. You know, this is nothing nothing like it. But, yeah, um, obviously gaming has just been a way for me to, you know, it's been my escape from anything, like, negative in my life, and I've always wanted to support that. The Rocket League community has been, become a family to mm. me. So they're part of my kind of, like, dreams and ambitions now. I want to support them as much as I can. Um, what, so yeah, I think, um, anything to where I can just really just spread my, a positive message and be involved. Uh, it's crazy too. Cause Rock League's given me new dreams and ambitions by like being in the world of esports mm-hmm. now and just like watching that grow and wanting it to grow is just something that I want to do now nowadays. So it's just completely changed my perspective of like me being involved in gaming being a dream to me actually having it happen Mm. and now i want to see just how far i can go with it um when and how did you get into rocket league from at i'm flucked uh sarp played sarp uh i downloaded the demo on ps3 when uh i was like nine and only had Mm. call of duty 3 and wanted to play more games so i was like i'm gonna play this game and i was like oh this is actually really cool and my friends will play on stadium and we would do like 2v1s because we never had enough for like a 2v2 (laughs) and i kind of just fell in love with the game that way and then i followed it into rocket league why are you such a legend from boyo royo rl i don't think i'm a legend i think i'm just a guy i feel like there's it's crazy to me because i feel like everything i've done in my career anybody else could have done but i don't think but they did that's true that that is very true I don't know. I just, I've always just wanted to have the initiative and just push something out for just so everyone could see. Like, if Dazzler could do it, I could do it. You know mm. what I mean? Like, you know, I feel, I, don't, I feel like I'm no, for EU skirmish, I feel like you guys could have did it or somebody else could have done what I did. I just did it because I just saw it and I was like, okay, well, if no one's going to, then all right, let's just see how it works. And then, the, you know, people are just like, yo, thanks for doing it. But, I don't know. That answer think... basically sums up, by the way, everybody thinks why everybody thinks that you're a legend. Just a heads up. That oh. is good. It's true. Okay. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> well, I said one more question. Well, yeah, one more question before you do. <laughs> do you have a favorite RCS team and a favorite CRL team from Bobby Fat 95 uh, It's getting harder and harder to decide my favorite RCS teams because I've always been really involved. Ah, I was a real big NRG fanboy. For a long time, I probably still say NRG. I think NRG is still my favorite team from a from a fan boy perspective. Yeah, I, I love those guys. I always wish the best for them. Uh, favorite CRL team? Whoever Ooh, you say will kinda... support. Bear that in mind. So this is yeah. an important word you're about to say. That's so tough, though. Uh, we hate everyone because... else, and we love this team. Yep. Oh God. <laughs> LSU. LSU. Oh, LSU. 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 Sorry, was uh, that? Yeah, that's uh, that's the roster of Low Tech, Ajax, and T Bates. That'll be my favorite CRL. Where team are they from? Season. What's LSU? Louisiana State University. Louisiana State University. God, that's so incredible. That's three very American words next to each other. <laughs> okay, well we are now LSU fanboys. Yeah, Cole. baby, LSU, 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 LSU USA. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice. Um, Dazarin, thank you very, very much for being part of this subpar party. I hope you had a good time. Um, and I did. best of luck going forwards, my friend, into uh, CRL and the rest of your career. I hope, I hope we get to see you soon as well. Yeah, for sure. I, you guys are a treat. Like it, it, was, it makes me more than happy to be here today. I've been smiling since I got here, hey. so I I love it. Um, everyone, go support subpar in any way you can, whether it's on Twitter, YouTube, Spotify. Patreon, uh, or Lucky you patrons. guys can, yep, uh, <laughs> and just again, even on Instagram, wherever you guys can, these are a good bunch of people who uh, really are trying to do the best they can to you know support the Rocket League scene, spread a message, and have some really good fun. And just so. remember, um, supporting us on Patreon is optional, completely mm-hmm. and utterly optional. Only quote unquote optional. To. In bold, it's optional. If you don't, uh, you lose your health care. But, yeah. you know, it's optional. Yeah. Also, ones. make sure to argue with them on Twitter, especially when they're yelling about stuff. Just argue with them as much as possible. Yeah, call us out. We don't we need, need an echo do. chamber. I, yes, I want people to call me out. If I'm saying stuff, you're like, actually, it's not like this. Tell me. I want to be wrong about stuff so I can learn about it. 
That's classic um, Stumpy. Oh, I wish I was wrong. Just yeah. once, I'd love to. Know I, just, what it feels I, like. I just wish I was wrong. Like, but I'm just so <laughs> often really fucking correct. It's tough, isn't it, mate? It's, it's, it's a hard life. Um, Daz, we'll let you go. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you for that lovely message. It's really kind. Um, if you would like to support the podcast, obviously it's over on Patreon, patreoncom slash HD. Head over there. One dollar a month will get you the podcast early, and it will mean that we can keep doing episodes just like this one. And if you have anybody that you would love to hear on this podcast write it in the comments on youtube or on reddit we also post it there it's just a youtube link to be fair um also like and subscribe to our youtube channel um it's very appreciated we get more content out um there's one more thing as well um this week because rlcs is starting oh, yeah. we are putting out a bonus episode probably gonna go out on what? saturday featuring the round-headed man himself mega shogun we're gonna be doing a draft um fantasy rocket league thing so that's yeah we are yeah two episodes this week this is the main one that one's bonus this is our you know weekly main one with dazzarin you'll Mm -hmm. always be our main dazzarin all right that's beautiful everybody thank you very much um make sure to catch the next episode of the poddy c we'll see you very soon bye-bye bye bye